In this video, we're going to create an inventory management system inside Microsoft Excel. It's going to contain four tables, one for the opening stock, then a stock in table, a stock out table, and finally, a closing stock table. In the description of this video, you will find two files, the first of which is this working template, and the other is a demo file that you can use to follow along with this video tutorial. I'm now in the demo file, and the first thing to do is to create official Excel tables for opening stock, stock in, stock out, and closing stock. Official Excel tables will create a dynamic range, which means as over time, we add new products, all our drop-down lists and our formulas will automatically pick up those new items. So I'll start with the opening stock table. I'm gonna select the column headings and then go to the insert tab on my ribbon and go to the table button. It'll say, where is the date of your table? And then just confirm the range that you've selected. And we need to say that our table has headers. In fact, the tables currently only have headers. Click on OK. Then you want to give the table a name. So you'll notice that there's a new table design tab on your ribbon when you're in a table. And on the left side, there is a table name box. And we're going to call this table opening underscore stock. Press enter to confirm. I'm putting in an underscore because you can't have a space in a table name. I'm gonna change the default formatting that the table gives us. And we can do that in the table styles gallery. If I go to the more button there, I'm actually gonna select this second table style. Now I've got to do the same thing for stock in. So I select the headings, and I go to insert table, or I can use this shortcut key, control T. Let's use that. Select the column headings, control T. Tick this little box that says my table has headers. Click on okay. Give the table a name. We'll call this one stock underscore in. Press enter to confirm and then we'll change the look of the table. We'll do exactly the same, stock out and closing stock. Scroll to the left so I can see my opening stock table. I'm going to freeze panes to enable me to see the opening stock table and the closing stock table on the screen at the same time. And to do that, I'm gonna click into G1. I'm gonna to go to the View tab on my ribbon, go to Freeze Panes, and then Freeze Panes. And now if I scroll to the right, I can see my opening stock and closing stock tables on the screen at the same time. Okay, so I've prepared the tables. Now I need some data in my opening stock table. Now I'm going to copy the data from the inventory management file. And remember that's also available in the description of this video. What I want to do is copy the product number to opening stock columns, all the way down to the bottom here, and then paste those values into our opening stock table in the demo workbook. So Control V to paste in. I didn't copy the value column because I want to show you the formula that we're going to use to calculate the value, and that'll essentially be unit price times opening stock equals unit price. Now notice that the formula doesn't reference that cell with its cell address, D3. It references that cell with the name of the column, unit price. And it does so because we're in an Excel table multiplied by opening stock. And again, it references that cell with the column name rather than a cell address. If I press enter, it calculates the value and it copies the formula down the rest of the column. 
The next step is to copy over the stock information that's currently in the opening stock table over into the closing stock table. And I want to copy with a link so that if I make any changes over here, it will automatically update the closing stock table. I'll scroll over to the right so I can see the closing stock table. And I'm going to copy these four columns, product number to opening stock, control C to copy. I'm going to go over to the first cell in the closing stock table, go to paste and paste link. So what this means is, for example, if I change the unit price of the chef's knife to 42 pounds, it's going to automatically update it over here in the closing stock table. I'm going to format those unit prices as currency. Okay, next step. Let's deal with the stock in table. Now in the date field, we're just going to put a date for when we receive stock. So I'll put today's date, control semicolon for today's date. And the product number field needs to have a drop down list of product numbers that appear in our opening stock table. Now we can do this with data validation. I go to the data tab on my ribbon. In the data tools group, I go to data validation. I allow a list. Then I click in the source box and I select all the product numbers in my opening stock table. And then I click on OK. And now you'll see that I have all my product numbers. Let's for the moment select product two. And when I select product two, I want that product description and unit price to automatically appear in columns J and K. And to do that, we can use a VLOOKUP formula, or if you're on Excel 365, you could use XLOOKUP. I'm gonna use VLOOKUP just to include as many people as possible, equals VLOOKUP. The first argument is lookup value. So what am I looking up in my opening stock table? I'm looking up the product number, comma, table array. Where am I looking up my product number? Well, that's in the opening stock table. So if I select that table, you can see it says opening stock in my formula, comma, col index number. Which column do I want to borrow values from within the opening stock table? Well, I want to borrow values from the product description column and it's after its index number. So it's position within the opening stock table and it's in the second column. So the call index number is two. Comma, last argument asks whether you're doing an exact or approximate match. We want to do an exact match. So I double click there and it will say false. In that last argument, close the bracket, press enter. You can see it returns the product description for product two. If I change this to product three, you can see product three over here is J Oliver cutting board fish. And that's what I have here. Now I also need to do this for the unit price. And the formula is gonna be almost exactly the same. I'm gonna copy that formula. Go over here and paste it in and change the col index number to three because unit price is the third column within my opening stock table. I need to format that value as currency. Now I'll put a stock in value. Let's say we get 50 items. The value of those items would be the unit price times the stock. Out of interest, Let's see what happens if I add an additional product. I'm going to copy this product number down. That automatically gives me product 21. And we'll put in a basics cheese board. They sell at 25 pounds a piece. Opening stock 10. Automatically gives me the value. So it copies the formula down within a table. Now we have this new product in our opening stock table. Let's say we get some more stock. 
for the cheese boards. If I go to this drop down list, you'll see that it automatically includes product 21. Now it does that because our opening stock is in an official Excel table. If it wasn't in an official Excel table, this list wouldn't have updated with the new product. So now I'm going to say we get 60 more cheese boards. You can see it automatically works out the value of those cheese boards for me. Let's move over to the stock out table. Again, I'm going to put in today's date. Product number. We need a drop down list of these product numbers, just as we did within the stock in table. We go to data, data tools group, data validation, allow list source is our product numbers in the opening stock table click on ok i'll choose a product product six and here again we use our vlookup I'm looking up the product that i've chosen in this row within our opening stock table call index number is two for product description and we're doing an exact match. Then I can copy this formula, paste it into unit price, and just change the call index number to three, format that as currency. Stock out value will say is 20, and the value would be unit price times the stock. Now with this value field, although it's already got the currency format and it's picked that up from the calculation, if you want the currency format to be copied down to subsequent records, it's always worth reapplying that format just to be sure that when we create a new record, the value is always formatted as we want it to be. So if I add a new stock out record, let's go for our cheese boards. We sold 10 cheese boards. You can see it automatically gives me my value formatted in the correct way. Final step is to complete the closing stock table. First of all, we're going to deal with stock in. We want to sum up the stock in values for each of our products, starting with product one. And to do this, we can use a function called sum if equals sum if. The first argument in the sum if function is range. Now range is the column that you're applying a criteria to. Our criteria is going to be this product number. So the range is the product number column in the stock in table. This column here, comma, we're up in the formula bar now. Our criteria is going to be the product number in our closing stock table, comma, and our sum range is going to be the stock column in the stock in table. Close the bracket there, press enter. You can see that it's done a calculation for product three, where we have a stock in value of 50, and product 21, where we have a stock in value of 60. If I go over to my stock in table, you can see that that tallies with the values that we can see here. I'm now going to add another stock in record, also for product three. I'm going to say that we bought in 30 items of the fish cutting board. So you can see now that the stock level has gone up by 80 in total. And if I scroll over to my closing stock table, you can see that it's calculated that amount for me. And we can do a similar thing for the stock out column equals sum if my range is the product column in the stock out table comma 
my criteria is the product number within the closing stock table, comma, and my sum range is the stock column within the stock out table. Close the bracket, press enter. You can see I get two values here, the stock out value of 20 for product six and of 10 for product 21. And that tallies with what we have in the stock out table. I'm going to add a further record for product 21 with a stock value of 60. So we should now have a total stock out value of 70 for product 21. And you can see that that is indeed the case. Closing stock, that calculation would be the opening stock plus the stock in minus the stock out. The value will be the closing stock multiplied by the unit price. And we can see the maths is working here. For example, for our product 21 basics cheese board, we had an opening stock value of 10. We increased the stock level by 60. Then we sold 70, which left us with a closing stock level of zero. Okay, that is the closing stock table finished and indeed the end of this video. So hopefully that is useful. If it is, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next video.